So again, the graphing, this is a graphing form. So this is the most important form because, or most useful form because it gives us directly the shifts and also the compression and direction of opening. Okay, so we can look at the P and Q value. Okay, so the P and Q value here. So the P value is going to be negative 3. The Q value is negative 1. So we can find the vertex from this. Okay, so we can just look at the equation and without doing any kind of algebra or anything, we can actually get the vertex. So the vertex is going to be at negative 3, negative 1. The other thing is we want to know the shape or the compression and the orientation, the direction of opening. So the compression in this expansion in this case, this is this value here tells us the compression expansion and the negative tells us direction. So this is a vertical expansion. Okay, and this vertical expansion is by a factor of two. So it's two times taller than what we would normally expect. This also has a vertical flip. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight that. That vertical flip actually comes from that negative. Okay, that negative indicates it's been flipped vertically. So here we have the orientation. The vertical expansion compression which just gives us a shape and the location of the vertex so where we can start graphing it from and so in fact we have all this information to graph so we might as well graph it okay so i can indicate i can find the location of the vertex okay negative three negative one sorry negative one it's down here Okay, and then it's been vertically flipped and expanded. Now it's kind of hard to show the expansion, but I'll show this as it's a little bit thinner than our normal parabola, and it's facing in the negative direction. So that negative means it's facing down or opening down. So I'm going to put highlight that negative there. The negative indicates that it's facing down. Okay, so let's take a look at this next one here. We have a parabola. It has a point, some point at neg 0, negative 10, so that's the y-intercept. So we have some y-intercept inf information that tells us something about the general form equation. We have the vertex information, which tells us something about the vertex form or the graphing form. And we want to write an equation. Okay. Now, if I choose to use the, uh, the general form, I would end up with this. So y equals ax squared plus bx minus 10. Okay, so that means then I still need to solve for a and b. And I need two pieces of information to come up with two relationships, to come up with two equations for a, to solve for a and b as a system. Now, the nice thing is the vertex actually is, all, is like double the information. Because the vertex is not just some point that I can, I can plug in for x and y. It also tells me the symmetry, which tells me I can find another coordinate symmetrical to 0, negative 10. Okay, so that would be, I could solve this using the general form. However, if I see vertex, the, ver the vertex form is definitely the form I want to use if I can. Okay, so if I've been given the vertex, I'm going to use a vertex form, so I'm going to not use that form. Although we can make it work, it's going to be harder to make it work than just putting it into vertex form. So I'm going to put it into vertex form. So I get y equals x minus p. Well, p is negative 2, so I'm going to end up with plus 2 squared, and then plus q, okay, which is a y coordinate of the vertex. So there we go. Now, I can't forget that there is a vertical expansion compression factor here. Okay, so I always have to remember that there's a vertical expansion compression factor, and I need to then solve for A. So I need some other piece of information to solve for A. Well, in that case, we can now use the y-intercept to solve for A. Okay, so it would be, it's not necessarily a mistake, but you'd make it really hard on yourself if you use the y-intercept and the general form or use a y-intercept in some other form because the y-intercept does not show up 
in anything other than the general form. Okay. When we see vertex, we really should be thinking graphing form. So I'm going to then go ahead and substitute in my x and y. So I get y is negative 10 is equal to a times 0 plus 2 squared plus 2. Okay, and then I can solve for a. So I get negative 12 on this side. 4a. So a is equal to negative 3. This is a vertical expansion of 3 and it's been flipped upside down. And if I were to sketch this graph, okay, my vertex is here. Oops. My vertex is going to be at negative 2, positive 2. Okay, so it's maybe somewhere around here. My y-intercept is way down here. To be able to draw this graph, yeah, definitely I'm going to have to flip it upside down. And it looks like I have to stretch it out a bit to make it hit that negative 10 value out here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm going to write my equation in. So y equals negative 3. I'm just going to leave it in the vertex form. Okay, so there is the equation of the parabola that fits that criteria. Okay, so here's another one. Again, I've been given the vertex. Okay, so I'm not going to even mess around with this one. As soon as I see the vertex, I'm going to think vertex form. And even if I don't see the vertex, I'm going to be thinking, it. can I put it into the vertex form somehow? So my equation then becomes y equals a x minus 1 squared plus 8 okay and then I need to solve for a I can just plug in my x and y to solve for a okay so I'm just going to sketch my graph here my graph is here has 1 positive 8 at negative 3 I better scale this a little bit differently 1 positive 8 maybe it's going to here negative 3 48 maybe somewhere around here so there's my vertex I know it's going to go up like that it's going to go up like that looks to me like you know maybe it's been vertically stretched a little bit it's hard to tell hey okay, but there's my vertex I definitely know it's going up okay so that a value should end up being positive so I'm going to go ahead and plug in my a oh, sorry plug in my coordinate my x and y so 48 is equal to a times negative 3 minus 1 squared plus 8 okay so I end up with 40 equals this is negative 4 squared or 16 a so when I divide I'm going to end up with 40 over 16 a, I'm going to divide by the common factor of 8 and I end up with 5 over 2 and it's positive 5 over 2 so my equation then works out to be y equals positive 5 over 2 so it's facing up there's my positive coefficient okay. the center is at negative or 1 and positive 8 there's my vertex and it's going up in that direction.